With a warning, sir, advisory committee, please come to order. <clears throat> All right. Everybody ready? Mr. James, Mr. Turner, would you? You're the first on the list here. Am I? With a, yes, sir, with a recognition of Mr. Holland. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a message here from the city. Actually, I put this information out on Mr. Holland. He passed on the 3rd of June, I mean, December 2015. Mr. Holland was a member of the Water School Board for 23 years. That's probably longer than most of been around here, but in 23 years he served. And most of you knew Bill. Knew Bill wasn't someone you just talked to. Bill always had something to say. If he hadn't said it was short and sweet, you always knew exactly where he was and what he was thinking, because he was going to tell you. But it was always a, he had a great heart. I do know that I served with him for a long time. We were on several units in within the city here. One was the, uh, the water and sewer board. Of course, you know that. And also, I was he was with he was the president of the Belfort Homeless Association. We worked on the trails. <laughs> Bill had several jobs around here. He was always busy in doing things. Um, I also know that uh, the NACP, who he was a member of, the NAVACs, and I could go on and on. Bill was from an old place up in West Virginia, coal mine. Had a rough life, but he learned to handle it. I guess that's why he was always straightforward what he had to say and do. And he, he was in the Marine Corps as well, in Vietnam with the other. And from there, several lodges here in town around the world. I can't tell you the number of things Bill did. Most people didn't know all of this, but he was a guy that was always busy and doing something to help the community. And see, I don't have to just say that to be said, I was with him and saw him do these things. And I guess most of you guys know his attitude for doing things. <laughs> if Bill had something to say, I'll say it again. Bill will let you know. And he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't bite his tongue about it. He also was, um, the last thing we have here, he was on the water sewer board. And he served courageously. And whatever he did, he did it well. And on his tombstone, when at the end of his, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it was, it's, it says taps, no, reveille and taps. And in between there, to tell you about Bill. He, reveille, he was there. When he took his last breath, he, he put on, it was, Y'all excuse me, because sometimes I get the little you know, hair soak, sometimes it don't come out of it. But that's the way Bill was. <clears throat> and I enjoyed him. And we lived a, a long, great life. And I can say, Bill, now, for your job that you did, along when you were with us, it was tremendously excellent. God is smiling on him right now. Mr. Chairman, please join me in standing to recognize that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very good, Mr. Turner. <coughs> Next item is the adoption of the agenda. I move that we accept the agenda as published. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Okay. Approval of the minutes from the November 12th, 2015. Is there any discussion on that? 
Do we have a motion to approve it? Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor signify by uh, raising your right hand. We can see better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, our city manager would like to discuss the ethics policy of the city. Dr. Woodruff. Good evening. I'm so used to saying good evening, Mayor and Council. <laughs> I almost said that to y'all. So, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Water and Sewer Advisory. We really appreciate the fact that last week many of you were able to come out to the meeting that we had with the joint session. I hope you found that to be very beneficial. The Mayor is sending out a letter, which will probably be get in the mail tomorrow, if not Monday, that will give some comments regarding that meeting and highlight some of the new suggestions that came from that. This evening, what I'd like to do is spend a moment with you regarding the ethics policy, which was adopted by the mayor and council on November 17th in council session. First thing, if you notice in the upper left-hand corner, there's something that's called Cannon 8. And this doesn't mean that we have a battleship that has cannons on the side. When I first asked John Carter when I saw the draft, I said, can you explain to me why we are calling them cannons? And he said, well, if you go back in the history of the city, you will find that many years ago that the city council adopted an ethics policy that applied to them only, and it had seven cannons in it. John went on to explain that the cannons come from the Anglican church where rules were made and they were called cannons. So when the original document was prepared and adopted by council many years ago, it had cannons one through seven. Those still exist, and those seven only apply to the mayor and council. Canon 8 and Canon 9, which are before you, apply to the mayor and council. As you'll see in a moment, they apply to literally everybody with the city. In adopting this, the mayor and council had a purpose, which you will see there. And to be quite frank with you, I left my glasses in my office, so I'm not going to try to read it to you. But what I'm going to do is at least tell you the general tenor. The purpose is to ensure that we are an open and fair government in any of our dealings when it comes to contract matters. Now, we want to be an open and fair organization regardless of whether it's a contract matter or not. This policy is required because we are a recipient of federal and state grants, primarily highway department grants and community development block grants. In a recent audit, they identified the fact that they had assumed that the city had an ethics policy that applied to the staff as well as the elected officials. When we realized we did not, we told them, well, we can do this pretty quickly, and we did. And city council, as you see, adopted it in November. So the purpose is to ensure that everything we do is done openly and done in a fair way, and that anyone who does business with the city as an equal and level playing field. I think you would agree with that. Applicability, as I mentioned, it applies to everyone. It applies to staff, it applies to elected officials, it applies to the advisory board members, and it applies to any agent that we may have. So for example, if we hire a, a person who's an engineer to assist us, they have to sign that they understand the ethics policy and they're going to abide by it. If we hire, uh, let's say, a not that we ever hire a lobbyist, but let's say that we were to hire an attorney to help us in a lawsuit, that attorney would be required to understand and comply with this ethics policy. Acceptance of gifts is very simple. We can accept none. Bottom line, we can accept none. On the other hand, if, for example, one of the engineering companies in town came during the Christmas holidays and they said to the Water and Sewer Advisory Board, here is a plate of cookies and we're giving them to you as a body, you can accept them. What you can't do, though, is, for example, if they said, Mr. Dorn, here are two dozen cookies for Christmas, Merry Christmas. <laughs> You have to say, you have to say, thank you, but no thank you. 
Sure. As it says in here, <laughs> to, to cover the most important part, you will notice it even says that this does not exclude donuts given to the police department. It actually says that in the policy. As long as it's given to the police department. So individual gifts of, of any value are simply prohibited. It also says that honorariums, gifts to the city such as land, or let's suppose that someone wants to set up an endowment and help people on the water and sewer bills. They can do that because they're not giving it to an individual. They're giving it to the corporate body. They're giving it to the organization. They're giving it to the community. But bottom line is we can accept nothing. And if you want to come by and say thank you, that's probably the most important gift anyone can give any of us. That is not prohibited. You will also notice there's a section on conflict of interest. And basically what it says is that you cannot have a conflict of interest. If you believe there is a conflict of interest, then you have an obligation to report it. And let me give you an example. Let's suppose that someone is going to be bidding on a, that someone, that a company is going to be bidding on a contract with the city and that a member of their family works for that company and that member has a brother or sister who works for the city. Now, that person who works for the city would have a conflict if that person sits as Wally or Pete or I sit in evaluating those contracts, those bids. We would have a conflict. On the other hand, if it is, let's say, for example, one of the secretaries in the department or anybody in the department who has nothing to do with the bid process, has no ability to influence the judgment of who gets the bid, then there is no conflict. There are other components of this which I would encourage you to read. I will not spend time to do that this evening. However, we are required for the public record to have the minutes reflect that this discussion has occurred and we will also pass around a sheet where we're requesting that you sign, acknowledging that this has been explained to you and you are provided a copy. At this point, does anyone have any other questions about the ethics policy that they have? May I offer one comment? Yes, and that sir. is, if anybody on the Water and Sewer Board thinks they may be in uh, conflict of interest before they declare it, they should go to the city lawyer to confirm that that is the situation because often people perceive yes. that they might be a conflict of interest, which doesn't always pan out. So yes. I assume the city lawyer is available to us Absolutely. to clarify that. Absolutely. And that's a very good point. Just because you think you have a conflict does not mean you do. On the other hand, if you think you have a conflict, it's always best to raise your hand and say, I need some uh, assistance here. Somebody clarify this for me. I'll give you one good example. Planning Advisory Board hears, obviously, land use items. If a land use item is in your neighborhood, just the fact that you live in that neighborhood doesn't mean that you have a conflict. You would have a conflict if you have a material interest in the piece of property that's being rezoned. But you don't have a conflict simply because you live in the neighborhood. But as you said, when in doubt, raise your hand get clarification from the city attorney. Any other questions or thoughts on this? Let me ask a question, sir. <clears throat> Back in 95, 96, when they started on the land out, out there, and it was under Danis Construction Company, was the general contractor, and, and then he subcontracted, you know, parts of it out. If a member here, uh, take me for instance, <clears throat> the man out there that was doing all the, the digging and everything, he was buying diesel fuel for me. That would not be a conflict then, okay? No, but on the other hand, the best thing to do is explain that to the city attorney right. and therefore get it in writing what the question is and what the answer is. It's been 20 years ago, so I guess I'm safe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on this? No, sir. 
Well, with this, I had planned on singing a couple of Christmas carols to you, <laughs> but in the fact that you have a lot of agenda items, I'll forego that. Could you but, sing um, those uh, carols while we sign the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, where, I, where I'm headed right now is to ring the bell for the Salvation Army. And uh, every year we do this in the management of the city, many of us uh, do that. And one of the techniques we found encourages people to give is this. For a dollar, we'll sing a Christmas carol, but for two, we won't. We won't. <laughs> so, with that, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lord. I'll give this back to you. Thanks. Thanks, sir. All right. CIP discussion. Mm. He's on the hot seat. <clears throat> Oh, Jimmy. Oh, you are. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this a new person? Do we have a new person? Yes. yes. Many of you might notice that my last name has changed. And yes, I got married last month, so my new last name is Trouble. Not yeah. Trouble, but Trouble. Sounds like Trouble. Trust me, they, yep, they, uh, everyone in my office has been having fun <laughs> saying that I'm living up to my new last name, so. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to start off with our uh, continuation of kind of going over the, the CIP. Last, um, well, tonight we're going to talk about, uh, kind of remind everybody what the capital improvement plan is, um, talk about the uh, previously identified projects that are, are slated for the next five years, which is FY17 through, F, through FY20, and then just kind of recap with what's coming um, next. So for those of you who might not be familiar necessarily here, but for those who are viewing at home, a CIP is our capital improvement plan. It's major non-reincurring investments, usually greater than 50,000, and it's investments in streets, sidewalks, facilities, and utilities. And again, it's a five-year kind of a work plan for us. The capital improvement plan, plan dis, uh, discloses cost or expenditure estimates, identifies probable sources of financing, helps us evaluate and prioritize projects, and illustrates the potential impact on our overall budget. So last month, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be with you, and Greg presented an update of our, the current projects that we're working on. And through that discussion, he talked about projects that are already identified as ongoing projects in, in the continuation of this next fiscal year in 17. And that included the Parkwood Regional Pump Station and Western Trunk Sewer, the emergency water interconnection with the base, and the Blue Creek School Road Water Phase 1. So tonight, we're going to focus on the outlying projects that we haven't discussed yet. So the map that um, you see before you on the screen, which is a little difficult, so we've given you a printed copy. Um, the map actually identifies the major roads. You'll see Gum Branch and Bell Fork, um, Johnson Boulevard, Lejeune Boulevard, Piney Green. And the color scheme identifies the major sewer basins for the city. So we've got um, over, we've got Brookview that's over on this side. We've got Henderson that's the salmon color. Ellis is green. Um, the brown is the main pump station, and so this helps us identify, when we talk about projects, the impact that it's going to have on, on the projects. So the first project we're going to talk about is Half Moon Creek, and if you will um, direct your attention, it's number three on the map that, that's in front of you, and let's see, number three, it's going to be on the, in the green top left corner that's the general vicinity of it and it's also found more descriptively on page five of your CIP handout and just as a reminder the the paperwork that we um, that you're looking at is still in draft form and actually we haven't even met with management to go over these proposed projects in this great detail so you're actually the first to see this first draft version so that being said, finance hasn't evaluated it. They haven't programmed. They haven't told us if we have money to do these projects yet. Um, at this point, we're just focusing on the scope of the project and the potential cost of the project. We meet with management next week to talk about the CIP as a whole to include the water and sewer projects, uh, the power bill funding, the general fund, and then in January, we'll come back to this board and we'll talk about the new projects and then in February, 
we'll recap with everything that's happened. What's changed? Projects get deleted or project costs get increased. Could you clarify who you mean by management? Because I thought management was sitting. Um, well, yes. <laughs> He is one part of management. We're talking about upper management. So um, the management team includes um, um, Ron and Richard, so the city manager, deputy city manager, um, finance. We got um, all of the finance heads, public services director, and all the division heads. So we meet individually, and as the group, we talk about the projects. Do we have the manpower to do the projects? Do we have enough available funding? Can we borrow more money? Can we not borrow money? Do we need to push the project out? Um, staff looks at it from my priority level. If finance comes back and says, we don't have enough money, you need to push some of these projects out, then we're going to lean on Pete and say, okay, I need you to prioritize which, are, can we shift some of these projects out or um, are they necessities and we've got to figure this out? Or perhaps, um, and you'll see in some of these projects is we need to go out and further evaluate before we really you know, try to identify this large project cost. And this, and this actually leads into the Half Moon Creek discussion. Again, it's on page five of your handout. So this area that is, is kind of hard to see, but it is, it's located off of um, Ramsey Road, Carolina Forest area, where the vineyards, you might have heard some of that in the past. This area, this larger area is identified as a potential future development area. And as such, using the city's philosophy that if we extend water and sewer infrastructure in this area, that it would spur potential development. We identified this area um, as a result of some potential development developers coming to the city saying that they were interested in developing this property. Where do you see water and sewer heading? So this is this project was, was sparked because of interest from outside development. So this would include a regional pump station along the Half Moon Creek between Western Boulevard and Ramsey Road and trunk sewer that extends from the pump station northward to the northeast side of Ramsey Road. And so it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's the green is kind of this area. Whoops. Whoops. Can't turn All right, how do you? Whoops. The middle. Oh, go. here we go. Wrong, wrong one. Oh, go. there we go. Let's get back here. There we go. So right in here is kind of the area of the, where the force, we would build the force main and then the development would come. So now as part of leading into this potential project, we have a force main that will be constructed to the, to the, from the pump station as part of the phase one Western trunk sewer project. So um, what's changed from last year? Right now we've, um, because development slowed and in, in result of the Parkwood regional project being pushed out another year, we've pushed this project out another year and the budget has increased a little bit due to inflation. So there's not, we haven't done any development or any um, designs on this project other than some preliminary um, analysis that you see before you. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. The construction costs offset by developer contributions. Yes. Where are you figuring that? Um, it is, we, again, nothing is, is um, set in stone. It is the similar concept that we've done with North Main Town Center, the Southwest Sewer Basin. It's the same thing where the city would invest some infrastructure and then for them to get water and sewer, they would pay back not only the facility charges that all citizens are required for new services, but it would be that additional sewer service charge for that service area. And to add to this project, when the developer, there were actually two developers that were very interested um, in this area and they were willing to upfront cost as well. So it would have been a public-private partnership, mm -hmm. and then the city's portion of the partnership would have been regained through um, our our special area facility charges. <coughs> that was as of back in 2013. That was yes, or 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. So, but as uh, Dina said, the you know. Develop, the developers aren't pushing this project right now and it, you know it's contingent upon the western trunk sewer project so there's no reason to leave this in if I think it was in planning was in 17 or 16 and 17 and we pushed it out wait where'd it go right here wait 
Yeah, it was in 17 and we pushed it out to 18. Mm -hmm. If we don't have any interest in the upcoming year, we'll probably look to push that out another year okay. or maybe two, depending on what development's doing in the other area, in other areas. Could you refresh uh, my memory? When it's got 2018, what month is that start? Um, it, it coincides with our fiscal year, so the money would become available June 1st. Of 2011. July 1st, excuse me, July 1st of that year, so it would be 2018. And then the money's available for that whole fiscal year. So one of the things that we struggle with in engineering is the money. we get all the money for all the projects on July 1st. And so we sit back and try to program um, from a management standpoint what projects to work on first. So, <laughs> But um, as Wally said, that we'll keep you posted on, on this project. Could you guess how many services that would provide this project? I mean, how many residences or tap-ons? It, it, it included all of Cypress Creek. Yeah, and part of Crescent Moon, mm -hmm. are you familiar with Crescent Moon? Mm -hmm. It is the area but... right here, but I don't remember the number of units. It was basically, there were th there were actually three three potential development projects um, that were going to connect to that. Vineyards, uh, Crescent Moon Track, and there was one other. It's the Tootin Track that's across Ramsey Road right here. So you're saying about 2,000? Uh, taps. I, I don't remember. I don't recall what the number yeah, was. I remember the other one was. We can look. Um, we can look I remember that the Cypress was 300 and some acres, but I don't remember the number of development units. I remember them being fairly closely corresponding, like between three and 500, but I don't remember the number. And I don't know that we got any numbers specifically on the other two tracks. Now, do you guys have a rough following up on that? rough estimate how much income that would bring back to the city based on that it was when we typically do annexations we include some of that information in along with the annexation um, requests uh, but the it, obviously there's going to be additional revenue to the city in the form of property tax and you know water and sewer bills that are collected but the specific con construction costs would be covered solely by water and sewer fee, or sorry, facility charges. So you're not anticipating any hikes in water fees for the customers, old customers in particular, to help finance and pay for this new development. No, we're not so that's, expecting that. That's the biggest thing I hear when you hear when I tell people plans and all. There it goes, my water bills going up. <laughs> So I think the public needs to understand when, when you hear about this stuff, you're doing this not intentionally trying to look at raising the cost of their monthly bill. This is financed and done in other means, right? That's correct. And that's okay. exactly why we pushed it out, because we don't see that those special assessment charges coming. Right. Soon. Well, I just think the public needs to hear that, because, I mean, like I said, I did math for dummies today. When I look at how much you potentially looking to spend in the next five years, it's quite a bit of money. It is. And to somebody that doesn't understand the finance part, it scares you. It scares me, and I'm here every month, <laughs> and it scared me. So I can, and when I tell people that I'm with or around, yeah, this is what we're do, looking and doing, they just panic. Oh, no, here we go. Well, we're going up $20 a month. So that's what I'm saying. You know, I think it's just comfortable they understand it's not going to impact their monthly fees. Well, and it, I had a conversation with um, Gail, our finance director, this morning, and our, our thoughts were that um, sometime either in uh, January or February, maybe we can schedule some time for her to come and meet with you also when we have some of these things anchored down a little bit more, because we do have debt service that's coming off, we'll, which will open up, um, you know, opportunities. Right. So... But we were thinking that, you know, once we get some of the more parts that are that need to be nailed down, you know, identified, then we can bring her in also to talk to you. The only reason I'm bringing that up, and here again, sorry to keep up time or, or stay on this subject, is there some way, I know we question putting stuff in the monthly bills or, of saying this so that the public hears that, not just here, 
but in their monthly bill or something. Somewhere can we put something in there like that explaining how the finance and, and maybe all this is done in layman terms that can explain it so that you know they feel better about it. Because I know that's the biggest thing I, I hear over and over and over. Here it goes, why do we need it? So I just think that'd be educational and beneficial myself to the public. Is there some reason why funding sources doesn't match expenditures? Yes, and that's because what you're looking at is a rough draft version. Um, so at this point, what you have in front of you, all we should be really looking at is the expenditures and up. Everything, the funding source, the budget impact, and the debt, none of that has been updated at this point. So again, what you're looking at is um, before finances had a chance to look at it and, and update the numbers. So if the numbers had changed from prior years, such as um, this one with inflation, then that's why they don't match. But yes, they typically would. <laughs> and when we get to the final version, they will match. Yes. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> they better, or yeah. we're in trouble. We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know. Yeah, normally Gail, Gail will let us know. Did somebody say you'd be in trouble? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see? Right. Um, so the next project is Holiday City Mobile Home Lift Station, and that is number four on the overall um, uh, map of the city. And it's in the Ellis Station, Ellis Basin. It's um, the bottom right of the map, and it's also found on page six of the CIP handout. And so Holiday City Lift Station is um, within the Holiday City Mobile Home Park, um, and this is actually a private um, sewer water and sewer system that um, eventually discharges to our station the pump station which is now over here <laughs> blue circle. the blue circle is irrelevant my map got moved um, and so the pump stations in yellow um, and so part of this project would is the replacement of the wet well with the construction of a 400 gallons per, min per minute submersible lift station we have done some improvements to the station, but um, this particular project will include new riser pumps, riser pipes, pumps, flow controls with an electrical upgrade. The existing wet well will either be abandoned or eliminated, and our intent is to reuse some of that equipment that we um, have recently added. So the main concern here is that the wet well that we currently have is too shallow. And so when we get a heavy rain event, it tends to um, overflow and causes us some concerns. No, so it doesn't overflow. <laughs> potentially. Potentially. It, it potentially it overflows. High. It goes high. Yes, it goes in the high alarm. My apologies mm -hmm. for stressing everybody out. Um, it, has the, it goes into high alarms. Um, and so um, as a result, we want to make the wet well larger. Um, so this particular project, we have no change in budget or schedule from last year's CIP. So it's still budgeted at 864000 but I think once we get into some of the um, details of this project, the cost might come down because we are intending to reuse the, the building itself. Um, and again, some of the electrical um, equipment has already been replaced. So, But we haven't started any analysis on this project as of yet. One thing I'd like to add to that is um, Deanna mentioned that the infrastructure inside Holiday City Mobile Home Park is private. It's privately owned, um, which does create some challenges for us because if they have, you know, if they if they pull homes out or pull homes in and they have clean outs missing, we get I and I from that. So those that is some things that we're identifying working with the, the property on our own on. Um, but also we get flow that actually comes from outside of Mo Holiday City Mobile Home Park. So this station doesn't just serve the Mobile Home Park, it actually serves a little bit larger area um, outside of that. And we just recently completed a project down Daisy Street, which is the lowest one. Um, we replaced that sewer line, um, which is fairly deep. So this is a continuation of improvements in the area. But it actually gets flow from all out in here, so it's it, it's a it's a much larger basin than just the mobile home park. Although the mobile home park is a contributor, so we replaced part of the private system. Is that no, it was we had we had a public line. There's a large ravine right in here, and it came down this ravine and turned in and goes down Clea, um, and 
where that line was, we were having problems with that line and where it was located, we weren't able to replace it in place. So we actually moved it. We got an easement from the mobile home park and moved it into Daisy Street. So we now have an easement along Daisy Street and we have public sewer, but that's the only public sewer that we have in the park. It goes down Daisy and Kalia over to the station. Is Holiday on a master meter or they have into it? They are on a master meter. Yes, sir. And we lined Clea, um, I believe, uh, last year. So, how well, old is that new station? Uh, peak, sixties. Yes. Yeah. The the pumps and the control panels less than six years old. Mm -hmm. But the building and the infrastructure is early sixties. And one of the challenges is everything goes down to Clea, which is the the road closest to the wood line, um, but the Sewer lines are, you, you can see how the mobile homes are back to back. The sewer line, the private lines actually in between them and underneath the homes, yeah. which is part of what creates a challenge with going in there and just TVing and, and looking for eye and eye. So it is a, that is a challenging area. That's private sewer, but you're doing that service. And well, the infrastructure, the, the infrastructure is private. And, but they pay through a master meter account. Okay. So it's not their pipes. It's your it is, pipes. No, it is their pipes. And you're TVing it? Because we have an interest in keeping okay, no, I that's out of our system. system. Yes. Is that pump house <clears throat> belong to Holiday City? No, or is that it, belongs, city? it belongs to the city. It's a fairly large state. Could, in the future, could we get a um, diagram of the basin, uh, something like that, services? Because I understand it's not just... Uh, Mobile Park, but I'm not sure I understand how expansive okay. that is, and okay. obviously that will service the whole, and the people and the other places will get the benefit of it, and we'd like them to know that. Okay. Now, are they penalize if you find anything wrong? What we would do, what we've done in the past is actually go in there and help them identify. I think you did some smoke testing in there at one point. And when we identified clean outs, we had them replace clean outs or broken services. I, I believe their plumber was with you. They, Maybe you yeah, they have them. a maintenance crew, and, and uh, we went side by side and smoked every street, every manhole we could get to. And if they found clean out caps or stuff that was damaged or broken, they, they immediately fixed it right then while we were there. And we just documented it, and we went through the whole park that way. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we found everything. Pete, where was that break in that line that was so far underground at 20 some feet? That, that, it was north short? north of the top of this picture, uh -huh. um, due north being straight up. Um, probably straight line, half a mile, a little further north. And uh, the Cottage Cove Basin okay. is an entirely different basin. If you look at your map at your place, it's actually, you'll see three yellow squares, it was closest to that one. It's right in that area. <coughs> so we anticipate starting construction in 2017 on that? Yes, and I did split out the construction, so we have to start with the design and really and define the project and, and do some design work and then we anticipate starting construction in 17 and finishing in 18. So we recognize it'd be difficult to design and construct in one year so yeah. the construct we think we'll get it bid in 17 but we may not finish construction until 18. I thought your team could do anything. <laughs> Money and people. And time. <laughs> It's all possible. Um, so the next project is the effluent transfer station and piping improvement. Now this is not on your map because it is at the land application, but it is shown on page seven of your CIP handout. Greg's not gonna like me because I'm gonna make this super simplistic in my terms, <laughs> but the black arrows are trying to show how the effluent is moved around at the land app. Um, so once the effluent comes, the effluent currently can travel back and forth between the west and south lagoon. 
and then the, it can also go from the east lagoon to the west lagoon and then upon final treatment it gets discharged in, into the spray fields with the so that's the black arrow this project is identified as a result of the panel of experts that we had come out to the land app several years ago and identified uh, looking at possible options of trying to um, have the flow more efficiently because as you can see right now there's a large quantity in the east lagoon that doesn't get to the south lagoon only by way of the west lagoon so this project we're looking at is the possibility <laughs> of making a bypass or a transfer station to pump it from the east lagoon to the south lagoon and then also <coughs> potentially adding another discharge point to the spray fields in the south lagoon how did i do where were these experts when we built the place? I mean, come on. I think, exactly. Well, I think it's important to note that other than this one black arrow, I like drawing on the screen. I know. Other than that one black arrow, everything else is gravity. So the only way to get water into the East Lagoon. It's to actually build up the West Lagoon, which is the, the our operating lagoon. That's the lagoon we pump out of. Yeah. So once you bring level the water level up in the East Lagoon or down, if you know in the summer if we get it down to a certain point, then you basically valve it off. But it's gravity. So if you open that valve, you know they're essentially going to stabilize. They're they're going to be level. And the way that water is transferred from the south to the west. It's also by gravity. It's through the same line, but it's done through weirs, and you actually change the weirs depending on the direction you want the flow to travel. So there is no pump moving water back and forth. So if you want water to go from the south to the west, or from the west to the south, you have to do it by gravity by changing the weirs, correct? Yes. So, so um, Pete can better explain. <laughs> I haven't actually looked in the like. It's like a, it's, but they, imagine a board. It's a, yeah. yeah, but you oh, raise okay. and lower, and it lower, uh, it flows so over the top, you raise the board, and that I've creates a higher that. wall. Okay. I, I've just seen the right. turning thing. <laughs> but um, if something were, now we have six pumps yes. at our pump station at the West Lagoon that sends uh, flow out to the spray fields. But if something were to happen at the inlet, or in that lagoon, we cannot send water out. So there is a point of failure there. Even, even with six pumps, you know, it's not likely that something would happen to the station itself, but you know, if it did, that is, our, that is a point of failure. How many pumps do you run at a time? Depends, Depends on, on, on Sorry, go ahead. So, no, go ahead. Depends <laughs> on how many, how many zones we're spraying. You're spraying, okay. It can be two. Or three. You don't use six at a time, though. No. Only for about to overflow the berms. Right, okay. You don't have a current liner problem in those lagoons, correct? We have what we will call whales, which are air, air bubbles under some of the liner, but no, we don't have a liner problem. Okay. With that, uh, I would have thought this would have been a medium priority rather than a high. And I say that because this would be one of the projects I would think that if it impacted the budget, we would might want to ask you to push out another this, year or two. I would agree with that statement. So maybe that should be a medium instead of a high priority? I won't argue that. I agree with that statement. And I think William probably would too. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think you will, but for keeping the conversation rolling, I'll say okay. For <laughs> well, I understand somebody project they would like to have it done as soon as possible and this may fit in and it's not compared to some of your other projects as expensive but if there was something that would impact and rates would have to go up as this is not like we have with a pump that is failing that's or, correct uh, no. but in William's biggest concern at, at land application site is head works because if the head works go down we will have a spill so and we have we have a project this year for improving the headwork. So, when it comes to the two, he is definitely high priority on the other project. So I would agree. Thank you. 
Um, in this project, we did um, push it out by one year from last year's CIP, but no change in, in budget at this time. So the next project is the Ellis Lift Station. It's number five on the overall map. It's also in the green Ellis Basin, close towards Lejeune Boulevard. And it's also page eight on the CIP handout. So Ellis Lift Station is um, located right off of Lejeune Boulevard and Ellis Boulevard. And it's that PS block that you see on the screen. And what I've highlighted is you'll see the, the thin green lines. Those are active streams or ditches with um, active water flow. And the other coloring is the um, floodplain and floodway. So the red is the floodway, and it's where you actually have active water flowing. And so construction is, um, we don't want construction in that area. And then the yellow is the floodplain. You can construct in that area, but you'll have um, additional flood studies and permitting, et cetera. And then green is the area be beyond that of the 500 flood storm. So as you can see, our pump station is right in the flood plain and partly in the flood way. Whenever we get large amounts of heavy rain, this station floods and floods bad. So this project would include an additional driveway access point off of Ellis Boulevard and then constructing a boardwalk from Ellis Boulevard to the, op the opening, the front door per se, of the pump station. Um, so this, this project, we need it when, it when it rains, but when it doesn't rain, we don't need it. Um, we had in the past uh, um, preliminarily looked at some options, uh, maybe of doing a berm or something along those lines that wouldn't be as expensive. But in, by doing that, we're just creating a dam that the water would just back up um, and affect those citizens in Hardison Hills. And so um, the, the scope of the project includes the elevated boardwalk and a new access drive. And again, um, there's no changes from last year's CIP, and this project's identified in the FY18 um, CIP. There's been times when Pete's people have taken a vote over to that. Yes. I've seen it. <laughs> Why couldn't it be do, done sooner then? I think it, it's, again, we only need it when it rains, and so when it has rained, we've used the boat or... I'm sure it's going to rain between now yeah. and 2018. I just... <laughs> It, it, it will, but in the in the bigger, larger picture, when you're looking at, and you, and it, it's it's a catch-22. Do you want to spend the money there to build that elevated boardwalk, or could we take that money and put it into another station that is in a little bit worse condition that we have more reoccurring problems with versus a a you know an eight year, an eight inch rain that's going to go away in a day yeah. versus uh, you know infrastructure that could be rehabbed. But well, is there safety issues with this? You had done some work on this station, hadn't you? We have we have raised manholes yeah. um, considerably. The generator is elevated. The biofilter is elevated. Um, this is more of an access problem, getting to the steps, you know, through the boots. We have water has been high enough to get submerged a meter base, um, and then if that's the case, then I won't let them go near it, simply because you have live power and water, and it does not mix. But we'll just wait for the water to recede. And as long as the station is running, that's all it can do anyway. Um, and then everything in the wet well and everything inside will flood, and then we just go clean it up afterwards. Is there any intention at some point to relocate that pump station? That's a pretty major station. I don't know how well. It is, well. but it's, this has been a problem for a while. Yeah. That's a million and a half gallons a day. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm that not is talking, not on our. That, not that one's about, not on our radar. I'm not talking so. about that being done in the next year or five years, but you've got a situation there that I don't think you would have done if you were building it today, and that's put it in a floodplain. What does well, make you need the so gravity to get it there, right? Yeah, it's yes, got to get to a low I mean, point. I mean, say it, but a lot of times they are in floodplain. Yeah. This one just yeah. Yeah. really uh, a lot of our problem is this culvert right here. That's the answer to your question. Is that what's causing it? It's that a bottleneck is, right there. Okay. There, there, there is a I've large been to that station there. in a heavy rain. I remember we went down there one time, and it's just... I can see why you won't let your guys get anywhere near there. You're going to wind up getting everybody electric. There's a there's an NCDOT box culvert there mm -hmm. that is just undersized. Is there any 
intention to study that to replace that culvert then? Um, you yeah, can't do it without the state, you're going to tell me, right? Because it's the state owns it. it. They do. And we actually, when they did the, uh, the new interchange there, yeah. uh, one of the comments that we provided was that we asked that you extend your project to uh, upsize that culvert, and they chose not to do that. That was never on their radar. And um, they don't have anything on their radar for the foreseeable future either when it comes to upsizing that culvert. And they tend to point, quite honestly, they tend to point to the downstream and say that, you know, the uh, actual receiving stream uh, um, is a problem for them. It's, you know, wetlands and uh, just a regulatory mess that you would be into if you tried to improve it. But it is natural all the way to Northeast Creek because I've walked it before. The next project is Branchwood Subdivision. It's number six on the overall map. It's in the Henderson Basin, which is the salmon color, kind of almost right in the dad middle is the location. Um, this subdivision is located off of Henderson and Onsville Drive. So staff has identified the need to evaluate the existing sewer lines within the subdivision. Um, as you can see, it's a very extensive project. In prior CIPs, we had identified um, a much larger cost, and that was when we assumed a full replacement. We believe that we potentially could um, use cured-in-place lining and point repairs for this project, but the total scope or extent of this project is un unknown at this time. The start of beginning in, in um, 2016, staff is going to start cameraing all the lines within the subdivision, and that all that result will give us a better understanding of what exactly we need to do in this subdivision. So the scope of the project and the estimate is is based on assumptions at this point. So you don't really know how much you got to replace because no. you say it all. Exactly. So, okay. um, and I would I would look at this project similar to the Park and Stratford project where yeah. last year there was, you know, one point five million dollars and I kept telling you I'm not quite sure. Well, we actually that project um, has resulted in the water lines being acceptable. They were fine. Um, they just needed to be cleaned. And then um, we are doing some point repairs and lining on, on both of those segments under this year's CI or this year's I and I project. So that project is gone. Uh, we're going to reappropriate some of that money to do the lining as part of the overall lining project, and we've got another water project that we need to do. But that $1.6 million project is, doesn't exist. It went, it went away. So we'll, be, we'll bring some more information back to the group as um, we better define the project. The next project is the FY17 Water and Sewer Rehab. That's number seven on the overall map. So if you kind of go um, um, south and, and to the west a little bit, again, still in the Henderson Basin, and it's page 10 on the CIP handout. So this project consists of three different streets. You've got um, Sanders and Thompson off of Marine Boulevard, and then we have School Street, which is off of Henderson. This project consists of um, evaluating the water and sewer along all three street segments. Again, um, at this point, staff hasn't evaluated to see how extensive this project is, um, but we envision design starting in 17. And again, we're going to start camera work um, the first of the year, first in January 2016. So design will be in, in 2017 with construction to start and then finish in 2018. Um, the overall cost, we did um, increase it. The cost increase was in part due to inflation. And then we also are going to be rehabbing um, one of the streets. And I think it was School Street, but I, I don't recall exactly. Um, but that re the resurfacing of School Street will be Powell Bill funding. And so that has not been identified on the sheets that you have before you. We've got the new Bridge Street Improvement and Streetscape Project. That's number eight on the overall map. Um, and then it's also on page 11 of the CIP handout. Um, I think we all know where New Bridge Street is. I hope so. you guys all arrived here today. 
Um, and so basically this project is it's actually two projects in the in prior CIP projects it consisted of an evaluation of the water and sewer that's located between um, Warlick Street and Johnson Boulevard and then we also had a streetscape project in that same CIP so for planning purposes and it makes more sense just let's just combine them so um, what we've done is we're starting with the evaluation of the water and sewer. And the, the map's kind of hard to see, but we actually have um, several, we have two water lines and several sewer lines all within the same segment. So part of the evaluation process will evaluate what condition the lines are in and can we just combine them? We don't know at this point. So that's part of the water and sewer side. And then the streetscape project is to look at these four blocks and make them more pedestrian friendly, a little safer, put in some additional sidewalks, um, maybe some grass medians, et cetera. Again, we don't have a final scope at this point or a preliminary concept plan. Um, these are just kind of some thoughts that we're thinking about. So the, the costs that are identified in the CIP, um, we're assuming that, we, again, that we can maybe line and do a few point repairs, full replacement of water, um, and then we threw in some, you know, Kind of an estimate what we think the the streetscape project would consist of so um there's not we don't have enough um, information yet to really kind of define the project scope this project it did initially was identified in 2019 and has been pushed up to 2017 at the request of the city manager are these lines under the street or under the sidewalk i think they're under the street and we've had some, um, when we did the Bordeaux project, we had a valve on the street that we had a hard time isolating and turning off. And then um, we've had some other issues. Um, so we know that we need to do something. We just don't know what the extent of it is. The other thing you run into in this area is it's one of the oldest areas in yes. the city. So there's some interesting configuration. Yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> FY19 water and sewer, it's number nine on the overall map, and that's going to be in the yellow basin, which, which is Wilson Bay, and it's page 12 on your CIP handout. This project includes the replacement of water and sewer along this section of West Bayshore from Canterbury to Westminster, and again, this is in the downtown area. Because the project is so far out for us, we haven't really identified the scope of the project. Right now, it's, we've just identified the need. So the, um, the overall cost of the project has increased in part um, due to inflation. But again, as we start kind of evaluating the scope of the project and, and the infrastructure, I'm sure that this cost um, has the potential to go down. We have the FY17 water line replacement, number 12 on the map. Again, we're back in the Henderson Basin, which is in the salmon color. And it's page 15 on the CIP handout. And don't worry, I didn't skip. We're going to come back to those at the end. <laughs> so the um, this project is uh, Astee in Idaho. And this is off of Henderson. Take Henderson to Barn, and it's right off of Barn. And these two uh, streets, we're going to look at the water on both of them. And right now, the project scoped as full replacement. And um, we're going to start uh, actually cameraing the sewer on these roads just to make sure that we don't have any issues with the sewer, even though we've only identified water. But if we're going to cut open the road, we'd rather only do it one time. So um, we're going to start reviewing the camera work on both of these lines. The cost has increased a little bit. Um, as a result of getting some better, more current bid prices that we use for estimating. So right now we've got design and construction are both scheduled in 2017. How do you look at water lines? Um, it's more of sitting down with our lines maintenance and looking at, um, talking to them, what are their experiences, and then pulling some work order history to see, you know, are the, the work orders validating that there is a need? Um, and so we'll go through that process here as, as part of the design. Let me ask one question before you move on. Down here at the bottom, it says uh, revenue bonds finance for 20 years at 
Is it going to be 5% or? Um, no, sir. All of that information at the bottom, that hasn't been updated. And um, I would assume at something that this size that I don't see us doing revenue bonds for this project. But because I know feds, according to everything on the news, they're going to start interest rate increases sometime towards the end of this month. Uh, so sure. that's going to cost us more than probably to. Well, finance typically looks at finance in the past has used five percent for um, their conserv conservative figures, and I want to say our last ones were two or three percent, but I don't remember which. Um, so they were, but instead of saying, "Well, it's two or it's three percent," they try to use a little more conservative number. So that's what they've used five percent in the past. I'm sure they will look at whether 5% is a good number to continue to use or whether that whether they should use something higher than that. I think we had bonds with uh, Bank of America at 2 point something the last ones that were sold. Well, and I, and I think our um, the large one that we did was around 2 or 3%, but I don't recall exactly what it was. But that that's strictly for um, looking at the budget impact and it's a conservative figure. And that's something that uh, finance typically provides us. Okay. Thank you. Piney Green Water Phase 2. This is number 13 on your map, so we're back in the Ellis Basin. And it is number, it's page 16 on the CIP handout. So this project is off of um, let's see, we've got Country Club Road, which is right in here. We've got Piney Green over here. Um, so this project initially started in 2011 with a surface level evaluation that explored the need for and the feasibility of establishing a major trunk line for future growth in this area. Um, the evaluation examined the existing Anwasa um, water infrastructure along Piney Green. But this phase of the project, we placed on hold while other work was progressing in this area, such as the Piney Green Road sewer project. So um, this project has been on prior CIPs. We've kind of just keep pushing along. So um, this phase two now is going to evaluate the feasibility of serving this area with potable water in a manner that's consistent with city standards that meets our MSSD. So. Um, we are, it, it, again, it's just an evaluation at this point in feasibility. Did you want to elaborate on Yes, I, I think Greg and I looked at this project, and although you don't have it in here, we've worked on a um, pretty significant revision of the description and the justification um, for a couple of reasons. We need to look at this ho overall area, and along with, you know, we presented to you last time, and those that were able to make the December 1st joint meetings, um, you saw the future growth corridors. So we need to take all of that into consideration as we're doing this. Um, all, water currently is provided by Onwasa. Um, there is still a slight difference in rates between city and Onwasa. So the city does offset that, but it is not near what it used to be. Um, I don't know exactly what it is now. Um, but um, what we found is the primary difference between um, the lines and service in the area really comes down to line size and hydrant spacing. Um, and basically in this area, so they get um, essentially the same service that other city residents do. Um, however, it would be nice to come back in and look at trying to fix the line size and the hydrant spacing. Um, but it is not all that different from some other areas in the city that are older. Um, but the challenge is we can't just come in and say, well, with hydrant spacing, we can set a hydrant here and here and fix the spacing. The problem is in the areas that we would do that at, it's a, you know, you need a minimum of a six inch line for a hydrant. And most of those are two or four, if I remember correctly. Um, but also what we're looking at is possibly taking this project and looking at a 12 inch water main that we have that goes out to North Marine Town Center and a 12 inch line that we have that go down, that runs down Country Club Road that stops 
um, right near the intersection of Pine Valley and the driveway into the country club and whether we need to loop those two lines and tie them back together or um, we also have a 12 inch line that's out at Patriot Park whether we need to figure out how to tie that line back into this area so the overall scope of this project at least study wise will expand a little bit so at your when we start looking at new projects we'll probably bring that we should have that um, nailed down a little bit better and try to bring that back to you as one of your while it's revised it'll be one of the new projects but the the scope we recognize needs to expand a little bit for this area now that's anticipation of the growth north of piney green correct and and north marine town center and patriot park okay um you know one of our concerns at patriot park is um we have a line out there um, and we can serve Patriot Park should it start to develop, but at a certain point, we will not meet fire flow requirements per our um, manual specification standards and design. So at some point, we would it, once that develops, we need another plan. And this is a, a way to look at that. The FY18 water line replacement, it's number 14 on the map, again in the Henderson Basin, which is the salmon color, and it's on page 17 of the CIP handout. Um, and this is the replacement of two inch water lines along various segments of throughout Jacksonville. So you've got Forest Court, which is off located off of the Forest Grove Avenue near DeWitt Street. You've got Bosco Court located off of Bosco Drive in the Northwoods area. Then you've got Canna and Woodland Drive, both located off of Johnson Boulevard in the downtown area, as well as uh, Church and Ward Street off of College Street. So as of, uh, as of now, there is no change in the project schedule or budget, and so we anticipate design and construction in 2018. Just hold on. Yes, <coughs> Is it because the lines are old or because the pressure is down that we're replacing them? <clears throat> They're galvanized. It's because of repairs. It's places that we've identified that we've had to go in and make multiple repairs. And it's because they're galvanized lines. The water pressure is fine on Woodland Drive. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> but this but is yeah, not these near are the all cost. Old. I mean, this is just looking at the estimate of yeah no right. that was we um because they're short lines yeah. um and we again using the current bid prices i think i even aimed a little bit higher but it's that's the cost that we have i know i trust me i said the same thing it's <laughs> so 2300 like, feet is that what you got up top there you go. um, and, and it, <laughs> but it's two inch it's lines. just it's two inch lines so they're very small oh well yeah, I see. yeah. Okay. but I'll, ver I'll verify the quantity just to make sure could you refresh my memory? Committed to is where on the priority list? Committed to is a um, continuing program, which is why this would be identified. It's a continuing program of replacing deteriorated water and sewer lines. So it's not so not continuing in that area, just continued in the city. That's correct. Um, and that stems back from at one time, and this is actually... Um, before I moved into engineering, and maybe during that transition time, um, we used to cash fund a lot of those replacements, and there was a set number. I don't remember the set number. I don't remember if it was 250 for water, and remember it'd be around 700 or something for sewer. And so we had that much every year cash funded projects. Mr. Thomas, you're here. You, if I get off base, let me right know. Here. Um, but so that was a it was a reoccurring project and actually it it continued like that the the name of it was water line replacement and every year money just went into it and finance went away from that way of keeping up with projects because the project started but it would never end so we went to identifiable projects and we just targeted you know, these are the water lines we'll do, but it is it is a program, so it's a committed to program, even though we don't cash fund it necessarily anymore. Yeah, my confusion is I'm used be. to committed to being something that shows prior year on the sheet, 
because it's Funding. we've started that project and we're committed to That's it. Right. We can't stop it. We've got the whole dog. This, this is a committed to program. Pro program and not a project. That's correct. And it's, so this, if there was to be some sort of uh, pressure on the budget, something like this is something we could push out a year because it doesn't have a prior year. Good. Mm -hmm. This is just going through and replacing the most troublesome, the oldest lines, and it just continued. That's correct. Every year you just kept doing it because mm -hmm. this area is, is the same thing. These are fairly old areas. That's correct. So, again, continuing with the same thought, we're on the FY19 waterline replacement project. It's number 15 on the map, which is, again, in the Ellis um, Basin. So it's in the green, close to Marine Boulevard. It's also uh, page 18 on the CIP handout. In this project, we are looking at the water lines along Memorial Court and Memorial Drive off of Western, as well as Commerce Road, which is also off of Western and runs parallel with North Marine Boulevard. So this initial project includes the replacement of the water lines, fire hydrants, and services along both of these roads. And we're actually going to be replacing the 6 and 8 inch water lines with a larger 12 inch. Um, currently, it's scheduled in FY19 with construction in 20, but again, this is a project that identified a need, but engineering hasn't done any evaluation or analysis on what's out there. Um, additionally, we do have in the CIP as a future project the extension of Commerce Road, um, and so they're depending on the, the water line, this project might get pushed out. And additionally, as part of this overall project, we had looked at the, the, the desire of installing sidewalks along Commerce Road. So those are some possible additional improvements that might be added to the project. But as of right now, um, it's in essence kind of a placeholder. We haven't identified um, the, a defined scope and the, there's been no change in schedule or budget from the prior CIP. Does the Enterprise Fund pay for those things because it's in that project that aren't strictly water and sewer like sidewalks? No. Unless we take a sidewalk up and then have to replace it. Then we do. That's correct. And if we do an overall, like if we go in and we do a water line repair and we cut a four foot wide trench down the street but the entire um, street needs to be overlaid, typically what we do is we pay for the patch and maybe a portion of the street out of the water and sewer and then Powbell picks up the other portion. So it can actually be split funded. Um, that's what so, I was wondering. And sidewalks are so, uh, Powbell eligible expense. So if we did the sidewalks, um, you know, if there's sidewalk there and we pick it up to put in a water line, then we pay to replace it. When you but say we, we, we put, mean the yeah, enterprise fund. That's correct. Part. Water and sewer but if we're just taking the opportunity to make the sidewalk wider, not because we tore it up, but because then that's then the that's streets. That's Powell eligible. That's Powell. Powell. And, yes, and sir. as Wally described, that's how when we look at projects, especially when we're tearing up the road, if the road's already in a bad condition and it's rated as such, then we'll look at going ahead and redoing the whole road. So under the Enterprise Fund, we'll use to make the replacements and pay for the trench paving, and then we'll come back with power bill and pay for the rest to, to surface Which help keeps the pressure on the rates down because you're, you're correct. Yes. subsidized by the power. That's mm -hmm. correct. And it extends our power bill funds because you're paving a, a portion of the street with other funds as well. So it, it helps both funds. Thank you. The next project is Sandy and Lakewood Drive Water, and that's number 16 on the map. And it is right on the cusp between the Henderson and Brookview basins on your map. And it's page 20 in the CIP handout. And this project um, is right off of Gum Branch near the intersection of Henderson and Gum Branch. It's where our new fire station over in that same area. Uh, this project, again, is uh, looking at the replacement of all their water lines, hydrants, and services along both of these roads. It is scheduled currently for design in 20 and construction in 21. And again, it's like a placeholder. We've identified a need and we need to go in and evaluate the condition of, and of the water lines on both of these streets. So there's been no change or in schedule or budget at this time. How old are those lines? They're not very old, are they? Yeah. 
that they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're 160. They're 160 yeah. PSI Pi 2 to thin wall pipe. We've had a lot yeah. of maintenance they're issues old. on that. Okay. On particular yeah, one leaking right now. Linwood. Yeah. We're working it. on that one. <laughs> not that I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to mention it, but. Hey. <laughs> actually, on, Lin on Linwood, we are finishing up the design and we should be going out to bid probably in January. We're, we're very close if, I mean, we're like right there. <laughs> but yes, that project, again, will be fixing the infrastructure and then we'll be paving the road. Now, when you say fixing, replacing the whole line or just mm -hmm. the part that's broke? No, I think we're, um, I think it was a replacement. Okay, thank you. So how is a new fire hydrant better than the old fire hydrants we got sitting? I mean, you replace the fire hydrants because... You're there anyway, or if if they're older, mm -hmm. we can't get parts for them anymore, uh, so it becomes a maintenance issue. Uh, so, so, so. Um, if for whatever reason if it gets inoperable, we it's really you hard to, to get the it. parts, so we we'd have to take it out and replace it anyway. And then the ones we can use, we salvage. Right. Pete right. right. Pete actually scavenged from them. <laughs> the old parts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So the next one is our inflow and infiltration projects and so if you go back to the CIP it's they're not on your the map um, but they are page one and two of your CIP handout the inflow and infiltration occurs when there's cracks in the sewer lines um, or if you've got downspouts drains etc that are tied directly to your sanitary sewer system so it's most attributable to infrastructure that is aging and needs maintenance or replacement we have an ongoing pro program where we identify areas with a high I and I, or inflow and infiltration, and we evaluate and look for potential causes. So the projects that you have that are scheduled are just an ongoing continuation of the same program. And um, Greg might have updated you last month that we are in the process of um, finishing our last year's 15 and 16 project, the design, and we should be going out for construction, which would include lining and point repairs sometime in January, February. So that project will be um, heading out the door and then next CIP or, or this next fiscal year, excuse me, we will start the design process again. And the design process is where we get with our lines maintenance and we look at areas that um, have maybe the stations that are running pretty high when we have a rain event. And then we start diving into some of the basins to see, okay, what are some areas or so that are potential I and I? And we'll go through the whole process again where we camera the lines and then we um, refine it to, to develop the actual construction um, and replacement of that. So again, this is just part of our ongoing process. So we have pretty much a set budget for I&I. &I, and so there, there's been no changes in either of those projects from the last year's CIP. Which would be another committed to program. A program. That's correct. And we will... Um, uh, Ms. Ayuso made some comments last month that um, about seeing, because it is, and the reason it's not shown on your map is because it may cover multiple bases. Mm -hmm. So once we have um, the specific lo areas located, what we'll try to do is give you a general area on a map similar to this, and we'll try to send it out with your next um, report. So we should be able to do that. We won't. You know, we won't send you the detailed plans or anything, but we'll leave you, at least give you a map with maybe some locations that we're looking at fixing. Um, but there are different treatments. You know, some may be manhole repair or mm -hmm. sealing, and some of it is cured in place lining, and some of it may be point repairs where we dig it up and just replace a small section. So we'll try to give you a, a color keyed map that you can look at at your next, um, with your next uh report we've got the, um, the next project is the castle hain water wells um, it's a page 19 on your cip handout this is not a new project that we actually changed the name the it used to be called the water supply wells and we changed it to better define the project description because we've got another new project that we're going to bring before you next month um, for new wells in the um Black Creek. the Black Creek wells so we changed the name for a better description so the um, intent of this project is to look at additional wells for the Castle Hain to improve some spacing it gives us the opportunities to rotate between the wells 
um, limiting uh, potential overage. And um, at this point, though, this is kind of a placeholder. We haven't identified any sites as of yet because this project's going to come after we do the Black Creek wells. So it's just a, a placeholder right now. So right now we've got uh, engineering design starting in 19 and then looking at procuring land in 20 and construction in 21. Why, why does that then have a medium priority instead of a low? Well, it's, low's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, do, we do have a low, but I mean, yeah. I you mean, know, if you look, it could be a year from now we're talking about this as a high priority because depending on what happens with whether we can stay off the next withdrawal reduction in the Black Creek could depend whether we need to go out and try to find new yeah, wells. But currently right now, so it's not even... Currently right now, I would still say that it's a medium. Okay. I mean, it competes with all the other mediums is why I asked that. That's correct. It does. And you well, said, how deep do these wells have to go? Uh, these are typically in the 200 to 260, 280 range. And then our Black Creek wells are in the six to 800 range, depending on location. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, when you say land right away, is that the same thing, purchase land for the right of way? Or is no, that it's no. land it's and actually, lease? No, what it would be, for, for well sites, we have to own the land. Right. Um, and actually, the minimum that we can own for a, a well is um, an acre, because it requires a 100-foot radius protected area around the well, which 200 by 200 is 40,000 square feet, which is just under an acre. Um, and so that's the minimum. That's if they put it right in the middle of the parcel. Um, but this would be land that the city would own for well for a well. Um, and land right away is that is just a um, fixed item in yeah. the program. So oh, okay. if, if we had our choice, we would have put land on this one, whereas right of way might apply more to, uh, you know, a water pipe or sewer pipe or a road mm -hmm. that you're putting in. But unfortunately, it's a fixed choice in the system, so it's land slash right away. I thought right away might have been like for access to the well, regardless of where. It Which was. would make sense. Okay. But no, this is uh, unfortunately due to the system. It is we need to purchase land. Mm, okay. Thank you. So that kind of recaps all of the projects um, that have been previously identified in the CIP. Um, again, the map that we provided just shows you these these projects and not all of the projects that are in the, the draft CIP. Um, and so wh where do we go from now, from here? So in January, like I, so, like I mentioned before, we're still in the process of refining the, the draft CIP. We'll be having discussions with upper management and management um, in December as well as in January. So in January, we're going to bring back or bring before you all the new projects, the new water and sewer projects that have been identified. And we'll go through the same, same scenario. We'll review all the projects. Um, I'm not quite sure if we'll have the, the budget impact at that point, but at least we'll have a, an opportunity to describe the project scopes. And then in February, we're going to come back again and we're going to talk about what's changed. So the projects that you've seen before you now, the projects, the new projects in January, and we'll talk about this project got deleted, this project moved out, um, and then um, we'll come back in um, maybe February, March, um, just depending on how everything um, falls out. So again, we're continuing to refine the, whole, the project scopes. And we, we still have to sit, we haven't done this yet, to evaluate our funding and the management capacity. Um, again, we, have, we present the draft CIP to council, and then the final CIP is adopted with the budget um, in, usually in May. Do you think in February you'll have a budget on this, these updated? Yes, we should have. Yeah, normally we like to do the CIP as a, as a final, almost a final version with funding, et cetera, because that's what's used to help do the operating budget as well. So by then we should have a, a clear picture, and then I think you said Gail yeah, was going to try to come as well, so maybe if, we can have that coincide. If not by February, definitely by March. Yeah. But so it, just, it should be by February. 
would like to make a suggestion though. When you send like a, a this out, uh -huh. you might want to put a note on the figures are, are much larger than they appear in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not correct. Or, well, and, and that's or, what we're So struggling. they gave me a heart attack when I did the math today. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. No, um, and I struggled because I it it was um, up to the last minute just to get yeah. what to get you something to review because I know that you like to review it prior to the meeting but I struggle always because mm. it's not it's never a final and I know mm. you come to the meeting prepared for some in-depth discussion and so yeah. um, but yes I will make it uh, maybe okay. I'll just block it out next time so then what? you can ask me where all the funding that or services just on the front, are <laughs> what you say you know numbers are not what they appear to be or whatever <laughs> <laughs> so kind of I will do sir will do. Right. that's right yeah thank you Thank you. That's it for me. That's all. Good job. That's it. Good job. Any other questions? I would like to just say I want to commend the presentation because I found it simple and understandable. And I also like, Wally, that we're not trying to do the whole CIP in one month, the current, the new, the, you know, the changes all at once. So I, I want to applaud your staff for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Old business. Anybody have any old business they'd like to discuss? <coughs> no one? All right. Wally, were you fixing? The only thing I'll point out is on your uh, water and sewer system report. Um, at the end of last meeting, uh, I was talking with Councilmember Thomas, I believe it was, and he actually, when I made the uh, statement that we've lost, I don't remember what it was, about two feet in our lagoons, and while it's hard to see in the numbers, you know, if, if you compared la this last month and the months prior, you would see it. So um, Mr. Thomas asked if it would be possible to just put a historical information. So we went back six months, which is pretty much matches what we do on the Grace Report and others. Um, so if you look at that is one change in your uh, water and sewer report that we send to you. And what I'll point out, although I think it's pretty obvious, the last line is not a total. It is actually the precipitation that we had at LTS. So you can, as you can imagine, um, when we talk about lagoon levels, if you look at the difference between October and November, it's essentially we lost another two feet in our lagoon. Um, but if you look at it, 7.71 inches of that was added directly to the lagoon by rainfall. So, you know, we don't have a cover on the lagoon, so we get seven inches of rain, they add seven inches of water to our lagoons. Um, so you can, you can see what our, our previous history is. And, you know, just if you, if you look at September was our lowest month, even though August had a heavy rainfall, you know, it was hot, we could spray, the land recovered quickly. Um, and that's the problem now, even if we get rain it still takes the land time to dry out we can't just because it's not raining turn around and spray so that's that's one of the challenges with a system like we have you know in august we could probably spray the next day or at the end of the next day following a rain event in the winter we can't do that the land doesn't dry out fast enough um, but at least you can see a history of what our lagoons are doing so that's really the only thing I'll, I'll mention that was a change to your report. At what levels do you start to panic? Now. Um, <laughs> now. <laughs> now we're half a foot higher at this now than we were at this time last year. What, yes. uh, what is this, when you say the level <coughs> in November was 9.5, was that November 1st, November 30th? That was the end of November. That was... So um, they're all the end of them? That is, well, no, well, really that's October 30th or 31st. For November. No, or, it's November. Oh, okay. Then it's November 30th. Sorry. So it's the end of the month. You yes, it's the end of the month we measure. So yes. you got everything's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Okay, we'll go to new business. <clears throat> you all should have had on your in your report here planning and permitting <clears throat> i have one question i like well maybe you can answer it or somebody can I'll try. where is the courthouse ex expansion going to be downtown 
is it where the old jail was that's now a parking lot or I, it's adjacent I, I, it's adjacent to the current courthouse going down the street. Where? the newer courthouse right you got the newer right. courthouse I'm, the way i saw the picture was it's adjacent to it right it's going to be like an l down I can't that street answer that, but I can we haven't discussed it yet at the planning board but and our meeting will be Monday night, so we don't have anything new on that. Um, might have it for the next meeting in January. The only thing I know for sure is at one point they were talking about disturbing Ann Street, and now they're not. So Ann Street will remain the same. So it's going to be. Well, you've seen the, the pictures and all of it, haven't you, what they're doing? Mm, we just saw a. a well, if you go, I went over by there the other day, and that the one annex it used to be what they called B Wing at one time, and the old social services building there completely gone. The only thing left is just a hospital, which as soon as they build, it's going much. to be a three story. That's the consolidated human services yeah, building on different. College Street. Hey, that's not a courthouse. Yeah, well, they're going to put, as soon as they get that building built, the old hospital comes on too. It's yes, all going to be a parking lot. That's going to be the they're they're consolidated. It's a county project, um, but I think they're yeah. consolidating DSS and the human health services um, all into a new building that will be right up against College Street and Warlick. It's right on that corner. Right. Matter of fact, I think the building's 15 feet off the roadway or something. Yeah, right. I mean, it's right up against the roadway. I know all that building's gone now that was there. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> On Wasson's report, we had a meeting Tuesday night. We changed the schedule to every other month. We're going to be meeting down there instead of uh, monthly. They have, of course, no new. Uh, well, they have plenty of applications, but they haven't processed them all yet. So we don't have any any of that. We approved a new member, a friend of Wally's. Jim Morton, he's a member now of the Wasa board. <laughs> Dixon Reverse Omosis WT project. They have had a lot of iron in their water down there and uh, at Dixon. And they have an award has been sent to Evirotech Harbinger. I don't know if have you heard of that? I have not. Har Harbinger, North Carolina. Anyway, they had a pre-construction meeting with him yesterday, and they plan to start next week and plan to be <coughs> completed in May. They're, they're doing to get the iron and all out of the water. Summer House is expected to start up in mid-December, and the plant will be taken in from Holly Ridge, the surge. The landfill, the county's had a con <coughs> consultant conducted an analysis of the, what is it, leachate? Leachate. Is that what it's called? Okay. Uh, determine the effect to the water system. While the city currently gets the leach leachate without any problem, it represents only about 1% of their flow during periods of peach, peak. Mm, can't talk to it. Leach, <laughs> leachate production and low flow, ah, it can be as much as 20 to 30 percent out there. And they're expecting to have this completed in 30 days, their consult on it. And tonight they had a presentation at 6 o'clock, 6 to 7, on WASA did uh, for the residents of the county to provide information about the process for going into their sewer system in extensions and connections and all. Uh, they were going to have anybody that had septic tanks and like that wanted to go and all. you probably seen this in your packet. That's what was discussed last night. Uh, the types of sewer, you know, forest main to gravity feed and all. Uh, they kind of surprised me on it when they talked about fourteen thousand dollars to hook up to a force main you know some the expense of the putting the lines from your house into theirs the facility fees and all like that and if you had to have a grinder 
system put in, that would be another expense on top of that. But that's basically what we did on Wassa last night. Anybody else have any? I would like to say that uh, if any of the citizens watching, if they go online to the city of Jacksonville, they can get an application for membership in any of the committees or boards. We'd like to have a few if anybody's interested in being on a board or being on a committee like this. You can get that or either come down to City Hall and they'll get you an application. Anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Go home. We, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Thank you all. Next meeting will be January the 14th. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And I hope I was pleasant. We got, we got, we got 2015 now.